they will be banging. <laughs> And might I say, hello, you fucks. Welcome to John Solo's Beer Brigade to you. Hello. Hi. How are you guys? Long time no see. At least three or four days. Um, I took a couple of days off, and it was wonderful. I did all sorts of ad mini things in the studio, and I programmed things that are going to... I'm pretty much taking over the world. That's what I do. So, hello. Um, today, we are starting, but we're not starting in the booth today, but we are starting in the booth. Tomorrow, Mingo, which I can't wait for. Uh, those things are great, AJ, uh, AJ Llewellyn. After that, we have Mortician Knight, and there could be kind of a, uh, a sub thrown into the uh, Mortician Knight plan there. We might have another book instead of the one I was planning on working on, but we're without Mortician Knight at the end of the week, and then we're continuing on from there. I have no idea what's next, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the way it works. Um, we have Rambling Gremlin coming up on Thursday. This should be a normal schedule kind of deal, and I want you to look at the ticker if you get a chance. Little Tracy Johns and little Alyssa Gramlin have been working their proverbial asses off. And by the way, I don't even know what that means, proverbial, when you put it there before at, I'm not sure. But I'm sure they both lost Tushy. Um, they have talked to the Beard booked up through, I think, July now or something silly like that. So, yeah, they are rocking it out. Thank you, girls, for all that you do. I really, really, really appreciate it. And, of course, Jane in the background with the Facebook group, too. Thank you all. Um, I have a... Uh, I have a story to tell, but I'm going to tell it once we get our our, our, our uh, guests on here today. Our guests are actually, everybody knows Lance West here. Um, we're big fans. Uh, he's been on the show before. He's been around. We know him, love him. He's great. Um, he actually, <clears throat> I didn't know this. Lance has friends. Oh, who knew? He uh, managed to bring one of his friends with him today, uh, Shelby Rhodes. Shelby's an author and, and has been uh, so far, uh, I believe the term is uh, uh, horn-wiggled. Uh, Lance had to do the audio. So one of the, I can't wait to hear these two together. Um, I'm very excited about it. And I've heard really good things about the, uh, the book, actually the whole series so far. Without anything more from me, although I assure you I'll probably continue talking, I give you Shelby Rhodes and Lance West. Hello. Hi. Ta-da. Now, I, uh, I, hey, have, a story. I have a hey, story everybody. to tell. And then I want to uh, get your comments on it and see if this has happened to you. So... <clears throat> Periodically, throughout the course of my day, I check Facebook Messenger and emails, right? Like we all do, right? So <laughs> occasionally I get messages from people that I don't know, which is way cool. Now, mind you, I've been an entertainer my entire life. I've, I've, I was, since I was five, I've been on a stage and really professionally like making money since 12 or 13. I've been doing this a long time. It wasn't until I started recording audiobooks and specifically MM Romance audiobooks that this started to happen. And on top of that, it happens sometimes two, three, four, five times a week. It's amazing. So <clears throat> last week, I was having kind of an off day. One of those mornings where you wake up and nothing's quite right. And I get this random yeah. email off of my website from somebody just saying, hey, John, just wanted to let you know you rock. That was it. Just some random cool person sent me a cool message. Have, uh, have either of you ever had something like that happen before? And like, how big did it make you smile? I mean... I've had readers DM me just to, you know, to say, oh, this was awesome. I love this. And it feels really good. I have to admit, it's like, even if they're not specific, what they love is just feels good. It makes your day just that much brighter. Lance, has this started happening to you yet? Well, I'm going to go check my email. And... <laughs> <laughs> because... I mean, you know, I, 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 like, I do that thing that we as narrators are never supposed to do. And occasionally I'll go and look at reviews of I've, I've performed. And, you know, most of the time that's just a really uplifting and you know, affirming. <laughs> but um, I don't know that I've ever gotten the, the cold reach out like, hey, you're doing great email. So... <laughs> I'll expect one from you, John. <laughs> Shortly. Yeah. I hope after you're a very we, patient uh, man. Fall, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a it's it's a wonderful thing though, and and Lance, you're going to get it. Uh, you, you've really not been a, a narrator in in this industry very long, so trust me, it's going to happen. You're a great narrator, and when it happens, it just it it just warms me up, uh, to say the least. Um, now, it, 
you have been sending in a lot of samples for us, Lance, and I really do appreciate it. And the crowd has been talking a lot about the series, and apparently a new book just came out, book three just came out today, but um, you have finished narrating book two, and that just came out. You've been sending samples into the Rambling Rambling show, by the way. Sorry, I didn't mention the show. Uh, so, <clears throat> first off, I want somebody, now you two can divvy up between you who wants to talk about it, but give me the elevator pitch for the, for the three-book series so far. Tell me what's happened and tell me what it is. Crazy vampire obsessed with glitter becomes a detective and yeah <laughs> i mean it, it's the story the story starts off at the beginning of them him making this detective agency which he ropes in his best friend who happens to be a zombie who is very sarcastic and like yeah she puts up with him and then in comes Turney, who's human, who's like, knows nothing about anything. So his mind is blown. And Turney, I mean, he's not that normal himself because he takes things way too easily. Like, you're like, why is he accepting this? You know, you just kind of go in and you're like, wow, he's just, he's just letting that brush off. It's like, but anyway, so book, book one's all about just the start of the agency. Book two kind of more romance like they finally kind of connect more i did something at the end of book two um you're getting ahead of the comments i like i like your i like your style good good idea go ahead that i uh lance will could tell you (laughs) i did i did a bad thing (laughs) i did a very mean bad thing (laughs) Um, but did I you, fixed uh, it. Did you skip? <laughs> did you skip a sex scene? Is that what you did? Did you not put the last one? What What happened? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, the warnings in book two, the content warnings, is cliffhanger, temporary oh, yeah. main character death. I can see in the comments, by the way, people are now getting ahead of you. So they are now beating you in this. And they're saying things like cliffhanger. That, that's one thing they're saying. Um, that's a, <laughs> but you kept on, you, you already had him. It's the end of book two. And you're, you know, practice your craft. If you want to put a goddamn cliffhanger in there, put it in. I mean, yeah, I people did. get pissed off. They really do. It was, a, it was a very good cliffhanger, mm-hmm. okay? Like, awesome. it was, I was like, one of my feather, uh, feather, feather. <laughs> fellow authors uh she dm'd me and she she's like that that was amazing that was just heart-wrenching that was perfect i mean she's like i clap to you for being so evil and i'm just like <laughs> <laughs> listen, to, listen, to that, listen to that cackle that's perfect okay yeah no <laughs> By the That's way, Shelby, beautiful. yeah, already, Shel- we're, we're not even 10 minutes in. You're welcome here anytime, Shelby, please. Okay. And sorry, sorry, Lance, please go ahead. I interrupted you. <laughs> no, I, I actually, thank you. I I have wondered a little bit, and I think that I'm going to just go ahead and guess that your readers would love to know, too. What's it like for you to, you know, to so for, for us, uh, you know, for the verse, for, for me getting to perform it and really, like, be in these characters experience this this specific moment was pretty impactful and i have to wonder what it was what was that decision like for you as the author as sort of the the goddess of this world um, omnipotent power where you can do whatever you want you made this decision to do a thing and what was it? What was that? Were you sort of like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to do this? Or were you like, oh, ooh, this is, mm, man, I'm like, did you feel that deep down? Or were you just like, I'm going to fuck with these guys? <laughs> well, see, what the interesting there? thing is the, I, with the way my mind works, it's kind of working multiple books ahead. So I knew this was going to happen before I finished book one. Like I, I like before even I, f- I finished like the second chapter of book one, I, I knew this was going to happen. Like I was going to do this. <laughs> so it's like, mm-hmm. there's a story going in my head and sometimes it changes because sometimes they're like, Oh no, wait, this is better. <laughs> but 
it, it's going in my head. So it was already set in stone before I even finished the first book. And I did, I was like, oh, this is, they're going to, I'm like, I'm going to have to get this third book out really quickly, or I'm going to be so hated. <laughs> um, <laughs> to put in perspective, I, I published book two in March. So I just, and I just released book uh, three in um, eight, well, today. So originally I wanted it just to be a month apart, but it was just some things delayed and stuff so but i had both books written like i finished book three like earlier like a few months ago so it was just we were waiting on tons of things so i like i knew this was gonna make people mad and be very upset with me so i was like let me <laughs> get ahead and write this because i finished i finished book two last year like at like in december because like, I was talking to Lance saying, I'm like, I'm already like almost done with this. I just, I'm waiting on things. And I'm like, I finished it last year. So and it was published in March. So that was like three months later when I'm like, it could have, the thing with my books is I have illustrations in the books and that takes time. <laughs> so a lot of times I'm waiting for the illustrations to get done, which they're super cute and they're worth waiting for. It just, yeah, <laughs> I have to. Uh, can I, I have a question here about the illustrations because I've not seen yeah. the ebooks. So I've seen really can... the covers. I mean, so the the illustrations. I ask this because of a lot of uh, the the fans that the watches and can you color them by chance and are there dicks? Uh, those are my two questions. I'm sorry, it's a two part. Uh, no, no, they're, they're just they're just little. See, they're Aww, cute little. That's all. Hey, uh, by the way, somebody yes. had a question. Uh, Lance, um, they wanted to know how you do your bats voice. Oh, you. <laughs> Trade secret, that one. But it is 100% organic. I've had friends I just like, oh, you know, you could do some like voice vocal modulation post production. And I've said, hell no. I'm 100% human. My voice is 100% human. And if I need to, you know, <laughs> if I need to do a tiny eccentric vampire bat voice then i'm so, gonna find that inside of myself if you uh now people are are asking and obviously people are impressed by this and by the way i agree with you kudos uh do not use voice modulation in there unless <laughs> unless you're working for disney and the title is star wars um can you can you do <laughs> the uh the bats voice can you just give it now i know you're on kind of you're, you're in your booth but you're not actually on your real microphone in your booth you're on your webcam because we're having some tech difficulties but I think people would get mm -hmm. the right impression. Can you do the bat's voice now for us, please? Uh, <laughs> now I'll, I'll, I'll preempt this. And Shelby knows, and Tracy knows, and Lissa knows, but there there have been times where it, it's... Because I've Too had, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I've had the privilege, yeah. So I've had the privilege <laughs> of going to narrate these books on on discord and and shelby's cool with that and it often makes the whole experience so much more enjoyable and satisfying for me the audience right there and i have shelby right there to be able to say things like hmm you know maybe maybe that one was maybe that let's do another um but um let me just Hold on a sec. Um, no we will we'll do the right thing here, and we'll we'll see if it's right in front of me. How it should be, shouldn't don't everything? You, don't you love it when when dickhead hosts put you on the spot and make you do shit? <laughs> Better do hand shit. me. <laughs> here anyway. I had forgotten. Yeah. It's been by long the way, enough. and why why you're uh, the the Discord thing that you're talking about, by the way, is absolutely critical to me anymore. I've I've tried. I even took a couple months off of it recently, and it just it's better when I'm working in there. You get the crowd's approval right away. You get to see what people like, what people don't, and that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm not going to make a decision. Sometimes I make decisions they don't like, but man, being able to look over to the crowd real quick and see like that, and having the person that's hiring you and paying you just sitting there saying no, that that's. <laughs> that does a lot too. <laughs> Anyways, please. I hope you're prepped. Please, let's hear it. The big bat. I can't wait. Um. Oh, where I, I have some script right in front of me, actually, and 
I'm trying to. I could send you something. <laughs> one, one of my buddies used to, uh, um, and actually he was, he's a, another narrator in the industry. He, he used to tell me, uh, if you can't order a pizza in the voice, you don't got it down. Um, he didn't say those exact words. In fact, they were nowhere close, but that was the point. So, <laughs> so let's, let, what you should do is order a pizza as a bat. That's what you should do. Okay. Okay. I can't, I can't eat. <laughs> He doesn't really eat food, but if yeah, it were eat food. <laughs> Octavius, if Octavius, this is the 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 character, the eccentric vampire, um, if he were able in his bat form to order a pizza, up, he would probably say, <clears throat> "Hello, I I want a pizza with ice cream and pickles." Chocolate strawberry sauce all over the top. So the the the, 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 the microphone being what it is, that webcam it cut out a couple times. That almost made it better. It was fantastic. Oh, I liked it. It was fantastic. He was great. And that's exactly what he would okay. order if he could order pizza. <laughs> Yeah, that's so good. It Thank you so much. It would be all sweet. I think so. I really all sweets. Um, uh, all sweets. So, yeah, Shelby has this incredible ability to this, uh, like, just precious character who is actually the vampire and who is, you know, obsessed sweets but can't eat solid food. So, you know that's an that's an issue in the in the first book they they he and Turney go to an ice cream shop and he has to order Lance uh Lance you're kind of cutting in and out really bad here what I'm gonna okay if you can hear me what I'm gonna have you do um while I talk to Shelby is I'm going to have you disconnect and reconnect again. You don't have to do anything fancy to disconnect, reconnect. We'll see if that helps your audio connection. Yeah. At all. Um, Shelby, um, when you were writing this and you had all two, three books in mind from the beginning, you knew that you were going to be following the same characters, which is exciting to me in a lot of ways as yes. an actor. And I'm, I'm sure Lance as well. Did you find yourself, I had a gal on here last week and it's happened more than once where people spend a lot of time with a character and they really get to know them so well that they're kind of chattering away in their head. Have you ever had something like that happen with these characters? You spend a lot of time. Oh, all the time. It's all the time. Like, I mean, that's how normally the characters go, but it's like you really get to know them when you, you're, you, you're just writing about them constantly. Like I had to take a break from writing book four because it was just, it, there was no point writing it now because I couldn't release it right away anyway. Um, so I'm working on another book and it's a new series. So I'm working on this book and I'm like, I don't know these characters as well because I've been working, I've written the last three books back to back to back. So I'm so used to characters that I know. I'm like, I'm like, wait, is this what, what this person would do? So I'm like, I'm getting to know these, these other new characters where I'm like, I know like these other characters. I'm like, I know I'm like, oh, this is their dislikes. This is their likes. Like, I just know everything about them. So, yeah, I, I feel like because I've written about them so much and, like, in so detail that I know them better and they, they are a little bit more chatty. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. And now, by the way, welcome back, Lance. Thank you for disconnecting and reconnecting. As an actor, I really do enjoy <laughs> spending time with the characters like that. Lance, do you, was this one of your first forays into this? I'm, I'm assuming you, maybe you've run into this situation before where you get to follow same set of MCs from book to book to book. Oh, uh, did he freeze? I think he did. Yes. Well, we had him for a second. <laughs> <laughs> We're having the, the opposite effect. I'm gonna have that. <laughs> there, there we go. Yeah, Lance, uh, unfortunately you're freezing. Um, I'll tell you what, hang out in the background here. I'm gonna chat with Shelby for a bit and hopefully we can at least get a little more in depth. And hopefully your connection, if you feel like it's coming back, it has to be stuttering on your end too. Let me know, uh, speak up. Yeah. Um, with me, when I get to deal with multiple characters like that, what happens on my end is I get so in their head that sometimes I am that person for a couple of weeks. I do this series called Bub the Monster Hunter where I have to be a large redneck kick, which isn't too far off the mark. I, I end up sounding like Bubba for two or three weeks at a time around the house. Uh, yeah, but the, uh, you, you, you mentioned the, the, uh, 
not knowing the, the new characters, that gets frustrating for me. Sometimes I'll end up going back and redoing chapters upon chapters. Um, have you found that exploring new characters where you don't know them well? And you I, know... Because it's the, like this, this new series, it's going to be like, it's going to be based on these characters after. So I'm like, I'm, I find myself, I am going back. Like, I, I mean, in my, when I, when I first write, I, I, I try to do a first draft and then my first edit is the most changes you will ever see, ever see in a book. <laughs> but <laughs> even like, just because it is like new characters, even before the first edit, I'm going back to edit and change things and like, wait, now this, this, this is actually what's happening in this world. And, oh, no, this character wouldn't do this. Let me change this. Like it's several things where just changing like this guy's phone from a smartphone to a old person's flip phone. <laughs> and like, yeah, no, this is what he would have. He would have a flip phone. He's the pit person who once does not like technology and decides he will have a flip phone. <laughs> and it's just like going back and changing these things. Or you just like in your head, like the world evolves more and you're like, or adding more stuff before you even finish like the next chapter and you're like, wait, I have to go back and fix this because I changed it in my head. So, I mean, it's good because uh, that's how you develop like your series and the world is that you're in. But at the same time, it's annoying because you're like, oh, let me go back for the fifth time. <laughs> uh, I, I have done that so many times at this point. Lance, uh, your video is looking better, man. You might actually be back. I think I'm, I, I think it's, it's that. coming oh! and going. Yes, oh, I think you could. Oh, fucking a, man. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I, I felt bad for you. I was like, I really want to talk to Lance too. You know, I love him. But um, the uh, how how can you, Shelby? Now that I got Lance to talk, I'm going to ask Shelby to talk. Shelby, how did you come to hire Lance? How how did you run into him? It was it was just um, I put up an audition, like asking for auditions, and then I heard a few, and then I heard him, and I was like, like. In the script, it was the Bat Voice. Like he was close. We had so many versions of the Bat Voice, but it was like the first, like the first person I came across where I liked his overall voice, and I liked how different the characters he was trying to make the character sound. And then the Bat Voice, I could tell he could get to where I wanted it to be. Um, Cause I know we went through like six or seven different Bat Voices before pinning it down. Did you, um, wait, during the audition, Lance, did you go like balls out in the audition and do the bat voice like that? Pretty close to it? Uh, it was. It oh, was... yeah. Pretty close. That's awesome. I think yeah. what you said, Shelby, was it, it was a little more, um, it was a little too far on the Smeagol side. It was, oh, yes. It was, was, was Smeagol. It was Smeagol side. And then I know at one point we were like, well, this is a bit too Mickey Mouse. <laughs> So we had to like let's just move draw away from that, and then but yeah, it was a little bit on the Smeagol side to start with, and I'm like, we're no. not looking for Smeagol, <laughs> but he was like the first one, like I really thought like yes, I think he could do it, like I think he I could get to a place where I'm satisfied, and I really liked his voice, so I was like yes. Let me well, that just... says a lot about him too, Lance. That says a lot about you. It just as another actor, knowing what I've done in auditions over the years. Sometimes you sometimes you pull back in the auditions a bit because you're like, I know I'm capable of ridiculousness, but I don't want to scare him on day one here, you know. So and I have gone on out a couple times and sometimes it's worked spectacularly and the other times I don't really know about because I didn't get the job. But it's it's a ballsy move. Right. Uh, you know, kudos, kudos to you, man. That's a good job. Um, now, Lance, when, when you went into this, you were already where is this the first series you've worked on for Shelby? Yes, that's right. Hey, were you already aware that this was going to be three books, four books, something like that, a series? Um, it was something that not on, not on first sight. On on first sight, I said, "Well, this cover, digging," and then I read the text and I said, "Oh, well, this is this is going to be amazing. Like this is clearly, you know, in characters, goomer, and like a, a and and a." a sort of fairy tale paranormal romance and i said well this this has to be and and then i think it was in our it was just in our initial conversations that you said this was the first of three and i four. 
Yeah, it makes a uh, it makes it makes a big difference when when you're making acting choices. It makes a big difference knowing if you're going to be working on a series or not. For a one-off, I don't know what it is about me, and, and maybe Lance goes through this. But with a one-off, it's I can kind of go crazy because I know that the the guy in the back room that I did a voice for for two chapters isn't going to be the main guy. <laughs> in the you know, so I know that they're not going to be. I can kind of get a little more crazy <laughs> with things, and I kind of enjoy that aspect. The other aspect, though, that I really enjoy is the the. Uh, I guess it would be considered urban fantasy is what you're doing here. Um, the urban fantasy element of it where in in those environments, in, in this one, vampires are real, that sort of thing. So you have that extra element which allows the actor to open up and just get crazy creative, like the bat voice, obviously. Um, and uh, I know I'm yammering on, but I'm excited about it. Lance is a great actor. And Shelby, you're a hell of a nice gal. Thank you for coming on the show. I really, really do appreciate I'm it. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> um, now, you would mentioned you were working on some new material, because I assume, because you were talking about writing new characters you weren't very comfortable with. Um, I'm not sure if everybody else knows. I don't know. What are you working on right now, aside from the series? Are you... Oh, so, okay. I'm working on a new series. It's called um, The Unwilling Adventures of Harlow and Fox, with the unwilling part crossed out because one of the other characters doesn't like it. Um, <laughs> so, and the first book is called At First Irritation. Um, so these two characters, um, basically this is a world where the whole, the whole world knows that paranormals are real. So, and then there's an agency that is called the Hunters Guild, which is a government agency that basically takes care of like, you know, bad paranormals. And a lot of times it's vampires because they're, they have a higher population. So, enter Harlow and new laws changed where they decide that, oh, human hunters, you can't go on a hunt without a partner now who is paranormal. Enter Fox. <laughs> who is a hyper, kind of, a, he's hyper, dresses very cutely, very short, and has a lot of energy. Now, he doesn't have glitter, does he? I'm just checking. No, he doesn't have glitter. He doesn't right, have glitter. See. No, it's not, it's not Octavius. Uh, he's, he has, he's, he's British, he's sassy, and yeah, he you, will, will stand yeah. up for himself. And now you're just being gets... redundant. You could have stopped at British. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I like to harass. Um, I like to harass Emma in the crowd. She's out there. Hello, so, Emma. Love you. Harlow is <laughs> possibly a psychopath, <laughs> and so when he's told he has this new partner that looks like, you know, just a marshmallow, and he's in because Harlow's like, you know, six foot four. Fox is five foot four and he just comes in and this guy in overalls and pink and bright smile and dimples in a vampire and he's just like, fuck no. <laughs> and Harlow is, you know, tendency is a psychopath. He doesn't talk much. He, he, he likes his quiet. Fox likes to chatter a lot, a lot, a lot. So they're kind of like opposites and like, it's going to be a slow burn romance. I'm in the middle, like I'm about 40 K into it right now, but it's a slow burn romance. So they're not going to get like, they're not going to be a couple right away, but they will be banging. <laughs> 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 like <laughs> oh, there's so definitely good. some hate sex. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh. That that's so good. Uh, the, see, the, 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 I like that assurance, though. You know what? I just worked on a project recently where uh, um, I had had a pre-reader work on it, so I hadn't done the entire read through myself. Um, I have cliff notes of each chapter and stuff. Long story short, um, I I did not realize that this book did not have sex scenes in it. It was an MM romance, oh. and it doesn't happen very often. And it doesn't. It was a fantastic book, by the way, really good. But yeah, we're we're rolling through, and like I'm starting to flip through the notes near the end of the day of the last session, like, I don't think they're going to bang. I don't, like, look at this. I don't, it doesn't have a very often. So, yeah, when you say things like that, though, because I'll tell you what, the crowd, they were like, when are they going to fuck? So I, I think it's good. You're giving it the, maybe you should put like a little stamp on there, like uh, they bang. 
you know, just like. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure to add, add in. I think I added in the first, like, in the content warning that there are, um, there is heat in the first book of the Under Detective Agency. Because technically, Octavia's attorney aren't a couple by the end of the first book. So, but they do bang. <laughs> There you go. So, um, I, I, I shouldn't. I, you just reminded me that I do need to make a notice because sometimes people read slow burn and they see, think no sex. I'm like, there's going to be sex. There's going to be a lot of sex, and it's, it's going to be very dirty sex. <laughs> um, it's, 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 uh, but, I've, if anything, uh, there should be trigger warnings for for books that do not have sex. That's uh, you're you're on to something. <laughs> People. I remember there's one. I, I did a book in the. Oh, you were cutting. No, you, you go continue, ahead. Go Shelby. Ahead. I'll wait for my. No. <laughs> All right, very well. I just, I just um, go ahead. I had a similar experience, John. I I did a book in the winter, and it was um it was it was super sweet, really well written, and but there was no sex yet, and it's the first in a series, and the reception of it has been shocking to me because there's no sex people are like, what the hell am i doing here like, that well, didn't come here for lovey dovey there was a uh i don't know if you guys have so there's been a a battle let's call it a battle i'm not sure um an industry inside the industry battle and, and basically what it is is it's very hard to advertise erotica on amazon authors know this um unfortunately you're not going to get popped up even if you get 150 reviews in the first day you're not going to get popped up in front of other people yeah. with erotica by the way i keep on using that hand motion because i think it's appropriate so what people try to do with with <laughs> and let's face it erotica is trying to get it placed into the romance which technically when you're looking for a read probably isn't right but for it's advertising not. purposes for the love of god i understand so we, we run into this where people are, some people are expecting romance, some people are expecting erotica. Shelly, you had something really good to say and I cut you off. I'm sorry. Um, I, I can comment on both of that. I, like the story before where I was talking, I, it was funny because I was, I read a book once and I really lo loved the book, but the whole time I'm like, I had, I had never wanted two characters to have sex so badly and it never happened. And I was so sad. <laughs> I'm like, why didn't you bang? <laughs> um, okay, anyway, on the other thing, it's interesting because, again, erotica is, I mean, even erotica, like, writers, they'll tell you it's not MM, it's not technically considered MM romance, though there are erotica that can be MM romance, okay? Mm -hmm. So, but I understand why they want to avoid that, like, getting, like, filtered into the erotica because yeah it doesn't it really it really hinders a lot of things um but it's it's interesting when it, they don't have sex because it kind of for me it ends up falling into young rope like it's young adult and instead of full which is i mean it's fine but if someone gets, sees m on romance usually they're gonna think at least one sex scene going in mm -hmm. and then if they see young adult a lot of times you're like oh there's probably no sex or there's a fade to black you know those things um you know i was gonna say there should be like we, we always talk about young adult and i get why you're referencing that it makes perfect sense but what about the geriatric but then i realized that i'm getting up there and I, so I don't think that counts. We still have sex. So yeah, young adults. But then again, also when I was a young adult, I was having sex. So I'm not sure if that discounts your I, point. I I'm never understood. Oh no, I have never understood the, the, the genre being called young adult and having no sex. I'm just saying that is what it is called. <laughs> <laughs> I never agreed with the title because I'm like young adult is it's adult so confusing. in the name. <laughs> it's so I'm confusing. Like, adult. I, uh, I've only run into though in my entire career, I've only run into one instance that I can remember <clears throat> where there was a, a, a scene in a book where a young adult was having sex and the, it wasn't my project. It was a narrator working for me. He did the pre-read and then said no. And we gave it back to the publisher and that was that. Um, I, I don't think it's, I mean, it's kind of a big deal. We don't want to see that. We don't want to see underage sex. That's just. It's, I mean, you know. it makes sense. It, yeah. like people don't want to see it because especially like when it's teens reading it, the teens will think it's okay. 
but it's when it's adult reading it, it's there's a level of creep that kind of comes in that you just it doesn't well, make you, yeah. Shelby, yeah. when I'm going past McDonald's and it's summertime and they're washing the cars, I drive by extra fast because otherwise I'm creepy. So <laughs> it's it's just the way it works. I'm getting old. Um, and I understand this, and I don't want to be creepy either. Um, the uh, I realize I got off on a tangent there, but it was kind of an interesting topic and one that I, I think maybe people should discuss more because how, how do you draw the line and how do you know as a reader is there sex or isn't there? Um, and I think yeah. that most of the people that are watching this show are probably erring towards the side of, I want to know if there is, because I want it. And more of it, thank yeah. you very much. Um, you guys have been a wonderful guest. Um, Lance, thank you so much, dude, for putting this all together. I know we've had some tech problems, but you were the, the genius behind this. Thanks for putting it together and, and uh, bringing Shelby on and introducing me to my new friend here. <laughs> and Shelby, um, and Lance yes. as well, you're, you're welcome back anytime, please, for oh, love awesome. of God. Awesome, yeah. Um, I've uh, I've missed comments over here. I tried to pay attention today extra hard, but I know I missed some, especially near the end. So if one of you can jump in the comments later in my group and, and respond, that'd be freaking sure, awesome. Sure, sure. And uh, do you have any, any, any uh, Lance, do you have any parting words for the crowd? Do you want to tell them what you're working on? Do you want to tell them where to find you? Anything like that? Um, yeah, yeah, actually. Um, hey, crowd. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Um, I am, I, I've just started an Instagram account because I'm trying to be modern and technological. <laughs> so come find me, lancewest.rids. And um, yeah, I have been, I have been re recently, and we could go off on a whole other to tangent topic about this. Uh, I've been having a great time working on a, a series by Cleo Evans. Uh, she does some, she's a fantastic monster romance author. And I did a project for her, part of a series that was an MM uh, monster romance back in the fall. And now Lexi Evans and I are doing the um, the Warts and Claws series, which is super duper fun. And uh, because I, I, I know that there are some MPREG fans probably here in the audience, I'm about to start recording the full uh, chapter in the snuggle um in the snuggle season series by amy bellows which is the uh fox shifters in love and they're just they're adorable and they're worth I love checking it. out I love uh, so um yeah she's <laughs> she's special um i really i really love getting to work for her and with her and um uh, keep an eye out for Omega from the Beach, which should be releasing soon. The uh, the sequel to the Merman Shifters take uh, based very loosely on the Little Mermaid. Um, that one was that one was phenomenal. But uh, yeah, I hope that we can do this again uh, sometime yeah. soon. I um, I look forward to. I'd love to you know chat with you, John. You've had some great releases recently. You actually. Uh, had a release or a book that I was eyeing that was maybe some tentacle romance uh, just a, a month or two ago. Um, that I'm I'm glad to see that it went to some really went into some good hands or lips or mouths or you know. There's uh there's so many things that go into my there. mouth that you don't know about, Lance. It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you uh lance as always man you, you've been fantastic uh and uh i i, I hope that lance are uh I, I know shelby you're going to grl lance are you going to grl this year i'm hoping to go to grl this year i'm i'm you better I'm kind come of between, you gotta see uh, me <laughs> <laughs> i'd love to i would love this I'm, I'm i'm on the west coast so i'm yeah. i'm kind of leaning towards 20 books to 50k in vegas uh, because that, as as you all know, is a, a big indie author uh, conference. But GRL's coming up, and y'all are going to be there, and other it's gonna um, be amazing fun. people are going to be there that I want to <laughs> see. I, I might just have to uh, disappear to the East Coast for a little bit there come, uh, <laughs> come the fall. But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll keep my Excellent. fingers crossed. And we, we, we hope to see you, man. And this year we've got calls. a... Uh, this year we've got a big narrator day on Wednesday, and we have our kind of our own room, so we can have Talk to the Beard lives, and we can do live readings, and we can sign up for it. So it's going to be excellent. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, Shelby, Amazing. Um, I really, really appreciate this, and please come back, chat, all that good stuff. Oh, yes. um, this is the easy part. You made it till the end. 
You did good, by the way. Uh, Shelby was a little nervous at the beginning, but she was doing this fine. <laughs> um, this is part. All you got to do is wave bye to the camera and say bye. See y'all, everyone. Bye.